Generally, PC platforms are cheaper than a PLC because nowadays are very common. For example, you know that nowadays are Raspberry Pi, so a platform like this one, is a single board computer, cost 50, probably also less uh, dollar or euros. So uh, the idea is uh, to investigate the possibility to apply uh, and to design a PLC on such a kind of a platform. And uh, this approach is called uh, soft PLC. Uh, soft me uh, means uh, for software, basically. A uh, software PLC is uh, a, a PC application, a software basically, which uh, emulate the behavior of a PLC on a PC platform, a traditional PC platform. So we can, we can for example, run a PLC on a platform, uh, on a very low cost platform like a Raspberry Pi. Um, but this approach has two main drawbacks. The first, uh, a traditional PC platform has uh, a number of uh, uh, digital um, input and output and analog digital and output very limited. Generally, the number of uh, uh, digital input and, uh, and, uh, and digital input uh, and analog input on a traditional PC platform is uh, close to zero. Uh, so the problem is using a soft PLC is not easy to uh, interface uh, to wiring direct sensor to this kind of platform. And uh, the other uh, problem is uh, uh, the lack of uh, real-time behavior of a PC platform. As you probably know, uh, when you run a PC, uh, an application, okay, it's working. Not sorry, but I have a, a very high capability to broke uh, the microphone, uh, so. Um, uh, one of the problems in uh, uh, a PC platform, as you know, is that uh, it's very hard to write uh, uh, an application able to satisfy time requirement. When you run an application, you are not able to understand, you don't know how many time this application can take. And for industrial application, this is a very um, uh, is a, a, a good, is a very um, is a, an, uh, an important problem, and uh, uh, we can run a soft PLC application only not on traditional uh, PC equipped with a traditional operating system, but only using a real time operating system. Only uh, using only uh, our TOS system, like for example, uh, Wixworks uh, and uh, and other uh, operating system, we are able and we are sure that our PLC application is able to satisfy the real time requirement. Uh, nowadays, the technologies is. Uh, uh, is rapidly changing and uh, nowadays it's possible to uh, run soft PLC application not only on a single board computer like for example the very well known Raspberry Pi platform but also on some kind of microcontroller I don't know if you know uh, ESP32 it's a very famous micro, low cost microcontroller. So basically we can run uh, a soft PLC on a platform that costs probably two, three dollars or less. Of course, the problem is not uh, running the, the PLC application on such kind of microcontroller, but uh, the problem is the programming of this uh, soft PLC. Uh, fortunately, in the case of, uh, uh, if you are interested in testing uh, the uh, usage of uh, open uh, of soft PLC on 
low cost platform like ESP32, uh, you, uh, you can use uh, uh, this uh, open source project called OpenPLC. Basically, it's uh, an open environment that, all, uh, that it's the GitHub where you can find all the source code. Uh, you can download the real time environment emulating the soft PLC on the platform, on the ESP32, and you can download and install on your PC the uh, free open source editor used for uh, programming the PLC, and uh, if I remember correctly, an open source version of a SCADA system, uh, of a monitoring system for monitoring PLC a complete open source environment that you can install also on your uh, PC. Uh, the soft PLC, as, uh, as mentioned before, was just the first step toward the virtualization of uh, PLC. Nowadays, oops, uh, nowadays, the current trend in the industrial automation is uh, in the complete um, virtualization of the PLC. The idea is to run the PLC uh, software in a container running in edge computing device. So the idea is to completely remove any hardware uh, device, any PLC, from the automation plant. But I speak more in detail about this solution when we uh, enter in the detail of the hedge companies. <coughs> Just to mention here, that's the trend for the, the future trend for the industrial uh, controller. Uh, but the question that probably you have, What's about the robotics, the robots? Because till now, I never speak about the robots in the industrial plants. Of course, uh, in industrial automation, nowadays, uh, we use uh, in industrial plants a lot of robots. Uh, different types of robots are available in industrial automation plants different uh, types, like robotic arms, cobots, the collaborative robots, autonomous mobile robots, SCARA, and so on. Each different type of robots we have in industrial plants are used for different applications. Typical application of robotics in industrial automation are, for example, material handling, the assembly, the welding, painting, inspection, and so on in all the application that where we need high precision, high speed, and high safety. Uh, the robots and the automation for, uh, helped to reduce the need of uh, uh, human, uh, human work and help to improve the quality of the products we are producing. Uh, and uh, so the, your question now could be, but uh, in the picture I showed you before, I never speak about of robots. Uh, what's the reason? Because uh, a robot, from the, industrial point, uh, from the uh, automation industrial point of view, is uh, viewed as a sort of a machine, a tool machine. And generally, the robots, uh, and the integration of, of robots in, in the industrial plants are not an easy task. So that means in the, okay, here, in this, uh, in the organization I show you of the industrial plants, uh, I never mention the robots because the robots are seen from the point of view of the industrial automation as a separate device that somehow interact at the field level with the control level, but is not controlled by the controller of the, uh, of by the main controller of the plants. A robot has its 
own controller installed in the robotic arm, for example, we can program this controller, but generally this controller is not supervised by uh, the rest of the uh, supervisory uh, system installed inside in the, um, uh, in, the, uh, in the industrial planes. So, okay. so robots are very common in industrial automation, but uh, um, are hard to integrate in the, the pyramid I mentioned you before. So uh, they are treated as a, a separate component inside in the industrial planes. Uh, now, focus on a higher level, uh, the SCADA. <coughs> the supervisory control and data acquisition system. Basically, uh, probably you already seen some picture like this one. Um, the SCADA basically is uh, the, uh, uh, the supervision system of the typical industrial plants and, is easy and it is used to provide uh, a, a human to uh, an HMI interface to the industrial plants. As uh, I showed you before, uh, a PLC is not equipped with a monitor. So how we can uh, visually uh, give a look to the industrial plants? How if the industrial plant is uh, uh, working well? So the only way we have is to using, for uh, using the SCADA system. The SCADA system basically is uh, a sort is a, a PC, an industrial PC, which task is to acquire the information from the PLC to keep uh, the, uh, this data in a local database and to show this information to a local operator, to, um, to a man that supervises the system. Uh, the main feature of a SCADA system is based to, our, for example, our to um, keep the database and the history of, of the plants, to provide the interface to the operator. The operator can uh, have a look on uh, uh, about the, the plant and if uh, the plant is working correctly. And another important uh, um, uh, functionality of uh, uh, a SCADA system are the decision support system. So basically on the uh, data uh, coming from the plant, the operator is able to take some uh, decision to modify uh, somehow uh, some of the parameters of the plants. Uh, the SCADA system is used to manage the, also the um, the maintenance, uh, the generation of reports for the management, and so on. Uh, SCADA, the, uh, a SCADA system can be used also for some type of control, but generally, as I show you in the, the uh, uh, pyramid, the control functionality are generally performed only by the controller, by the PLC. The role of SCADA is mainly to supervise this kind of uh, controller. Uh, the uh, SCADA system can acquire the uh, information from uh, the PLC using uh, generally network interface. All the PLC I showed you before are equipped with a network interface that is used to transfer uh, the information to the supervision system, of course. Um, so, and um, the, the SCADA uh, is uh, playing an important role in the automation because uh, uh, using uh, the, the data stored in, size in the local database is possible from an operator, a human, uh, to improve the efficiency of the plant, to optimize the resources, and uh, to respond to any uh, alert or event on the industrial plants. 
of course, uh, uh, so basically, basically the functionality of a SCADA system are to um, provide information about the current status of, uh, of the plants, for example, the current status of the level of the water in each tank, like in this picture, uh, to analyze the, histo uh, the historical data and to provide information regarding alarm and events. Um, um, also, the, the SCADA system is nowadays, of course, okay, uh, is a changing uh, thanks to, of course, Industry 4.0 technologies. And, uh, for example, some, uh, nowadays, some of the functionality, like, for example, optimization of the plants, uh, in, the <laughs> in the last plants are not performed, by, uh, again, by a human operator, but by machine learning technique, at uh, an intelligent, an artificial intelligence uh, AI technique that uh, automatically, uh, using an information stored in the database, try to optimize the best behavior of the plants, okay? So, uh, um, one of the current trends in the SCADA system, in Industry 4.0, is the usage of cloud computing for remote um, transfer of these data. Uh, and one of the classical, uh, nowadays, uh, functionality of uh, as advanced SCADA system is the predictive maintenance. So again, uh, using the information uh, about the plant, about the machine, I can understand when uh, is the time to uh, maintenance one uh, of the machine of the plants. And the predictive maintenance is performed nowadays in modern SCADA system directly by AI algorithm. <coughs> Um, just a few words also about one of the components of uh, the, uh, on the top of the mm, automation, industrial automation pyramids is the manufacturing execution system. The SCADA basically has the role just to monitor the system, uh, to acquire information regarding the plans, uh, to schedule maintenance, but uh, the planning of uh, uh, the type of the production in an assembly line is uh, defined by the manufacturing execution uh, system, uh, informative system. The role of this informative system is to control the production, acquiring the information from SCADA system, and uh, to manage the resources and to plan the, uh, the production of the next days. So, play an important role for the management of the entire assembly line. Uh, one step back. Uh, in order to introduce uh, uh, the topic on which we are interested uh, now, uh, the communication, basically. Uh, in the uh, communication, in the industrial automation uh, pyramid I showed you before, I told you that uh, uh, the different functionality of the automation plant are organized in, in level. As you can see from the picture here, generally all the equipment and devices of each level has the possibility to communicate, to exchange the information horizontally inside in the same, can exchange uh, the information using a communication system at the same level. But in the automation system, uh, I have also to transfer the information from one level to the other one. So you have another type of communication inside in uh, industrial plants a vertical communication that allows the communication and the data exchange between devices of, uh, uh, of close level. 
So as I mentioned you before, it's not possible for a supervision, as, mm, as CATA system at supervisory level, acquire directly the information from a sensor. So the communication, the, the vertical, vertical communication is performed only between closed layer. So the sensor of the field level can exchange data with the control level, with the PLC. The PLC aggregates this information and provides the information of the sensor to the supervisory level. The SCADA system acquires the information from different controllers in the plant, aggregates this data and provides an aggregation of this data to the planning level, to the uh, manufacturing execution uh, system. Uh, so, from the point of view of, uh, um, we can see um, the industrial uh, automation plant uh, also as a complex computer network, or better, a complex device network, communication network. <coughs> we have different uh, uh, level of communication system in traditional um, industrial automation. We have uh, the communication system used for the communication of sensors and the sensor with PLC is called field bus. It's a bu communication bus for the field level. Uh, the network used for the communication of data between a PLC is called control network because connect devices at the control level and uh, the plant network connect the SCADA system with the PLC. Nowadays, the plant network and the control network in modern plants are the same. Another characteristic I that we have to highlight in this picture is that um, uh, in an industrial plant, generally, we don't have a single field bus that connect a single type of field bus connecting all the sensor in all the actuators. Because as, as uh, I mentioned before, factory automation and automation uh, and process automation basically use different devices. So if uh, I have an industrial plant like this one, uh, summarized in this uh, picture, where the factory automation and uh, process automation has to coexist in the same plants, the communication network are different because devices are different and communication systems are different. And uh, we, in industrial plants, that's why an industrial plant is a complex uh, system from the communication point of view. Be because uh, we have different technologies, different communication protocols that share the same space. And, and that in somehow we need to exchange the information. For example, in this picture, I have uh, the field bus for the factory automation and another type of uh, field bus called IEC 61850 is a station bus for the process automation, in particular uh, for uh, electrical uh, automation. And each bus has to connect different elements. So, just to summarize what uh, I just tell you. Um, the, uh, uh, and a typical uh, industrial automation uh, system is uh, an environment where uh, the device has to share, to exchange a lot of data and uh, um, have to exchange this information generally in real time. In real time, what, what it means? It means that the 
de maximum delay, transmission delay from sensors to the PLC has to be limited and fixed as a specific characteristic of uh, real time uh, of uh, a field bus, uh, um, field bus industrial communication system. Uh, in uh, a typical industrial environment, as I mentioned before, uh, have to coexist different uh, communication technologies. Some of them, of them are based on Ethernet and TCP IP. Other, like the traditional field bus, are not TCP IP based, but use proprietary protocol. Uh, in some application, for example in process automation, uh, the usage of uh, wireless communication system is possible. And so in some application, we have also a wireless communication protocol that share the same environment. But we enter more in detail about these uh, in a couple of days. Uh, so we have uh, in traditional industrial plants, uh, a hierarchical organization also of the communication uh, infrastructure. So we have the communication between computer at the higher level, uh, between uh, um, NIS and uh, SCADA, for example. Uh, and in this case, generally we use uh, uh, Ethernet-based uh, uh, communication network or also uh, Wi-Fi is also possible. We use uh, generally uh, protocols based on TCP IP because it's a, a traditional communication between, uh, um, between computers. And uh, uh, one of the hot topic for this kind of uh, communication uh, system is uh, the cyber security. So that means we need to um, to protect the network from, um, uh, from uh, external uh, access, external uh, treats. And, uh, and one of the main uh, requirements of this level is the capability of the communication system to transfer a huge amount of data. Uh, then we have the communication between computers and controllers, basically between the SCADA and PLC. Also in, big, in this case, we can use uh, uh, Ethernet, P Ethernet, uh, Ethernet and uh, TCP IP uh, protocols. Because again, uh, in the, again, in the communication level between SCADA and PLC, we don't need to respect real-time behavior because uh, we are just transferring information for monitoring purposes. So we need to be able to transfer a huge amount of data without any specific requirement in terms of real-time uh, behavior. As uh, probably, I'm not sure, show you in the next slide, but nowadays the communication protocol used for the communication between SCADA and controllers and PLC is the, is the so-called OPC UA protocol that probably we, we see in one of uh, our last uh, lecture. Um, in uh, industrial automation, we have another level of, of communication, the communication between the controllers inside the cell level. Um, generally, the communication between controllers um, require uh, advanced um, communication system able to um, satisfy some um, real-time um, requirements in the communication. Uh, the most uh, strict um, communication system from the point of view 
of uh, real-time uh, communication is for sure the field bus, the lower layer of the communication. Because at this layer, field bus layer, we need to transfer the information from sensor to the controller. And uh, if you remember the slide of a tank, uh, the tank, uh, the, the controller, take its decision on how to operate on the actuator on the basis of information coming from a sensor. So any delay I have in the communication system between sensor <coughs> and the controller affect the, behavi the, the behavior and the performance of the control system loop. And uh, in some cases, uh, make the control law impossible to realize. So the typical response time of uh, this kind of network is below 50 milliseconds. Uh, I am telling in detail on the field bus, just but this one probably is the last slide for today, to the field bus, because the field bus, as I mentioned before, are specific uh, uh, communication network uh, used just and only for industrial plants. They are dedicated system uh, which uh, has a specific characteristic. In, in particular, the <coughs> field bus uh, should be uh, simple and economic because uh, uh, we need to try to reduce the cost of the installation of field bus in industrial plants because uh, a field bus can connect hundreds of sensors and hundreds of actuators in a real system. So it's important to reduce the cost of uh, this communication. And since uh, the field bus transfer the information coming from sensor, uh, the field bus and the communication of the field bus uh, has to be robust and reliable. Generally, it's not allowed to lost information at this level. Otherwise, the controller is not able to control the system if we miss some of the data. Uh, the problem of uh, uh, the industrial uh, field bus is that uh, during uh, the last uh, probably 40 years, the uh, manufacturer of devices for industrial automation, like Siemens, uh, Rockwell Automation, uh, Bosch, uh, Schneider Electric, and so on, in the last 40 years, design approximately 10, 15 different, uh, uh, different uh, type of field bus system. Each of them more or less with the same characteristics. Uh, and property protocol. So that means I cannot connect uh, one sensor produced by one manufacturer uh, using the communication protocol of another manufacturer. Uh, this situation basically uh, limits the interoperability between devices in the industrial automation. That's why uh, nowadays, uh, and industrial plants typically use complaints of only one single manufacturer because the interoperability between sensors and controller of uh, different manufacturers is nowadays practically impossible. Uh, the standard, because in uh, pro approximately 20 years ago, uh, uh, has been uh, defined a standard called IEC 60-1158. Uh, uh, but in this standard, uh, basically, are defined all the existing uh, communication problems. It does not solve the, the problem. Uh, recently, in the last 20 years, and that's the last things for today, uh, the situation is uh, improving because the traditional field bus basic, ba based on a serial connection moved to uh, ethernet based connection. And uh, this situation is uh, uh, improving the, uh, and the usage of uh, 
TCP IP based protocol uh, over Ethernet inside, uh, in also at the field level, improve uh, the is going to improve the interoperability between uh, devices produced by different operators. Okay, that's the uh, last slide for today because from the next lecture we start with uh, the industrial internal of things. Okay, thank you.